Welcome to the Altura Podcast. This is an audio branch of the Altura LA Art Gallery and Creative Space in Lincoln Heights, one of the oldest neighborhoods in Los Angeles. Our guests on this episode are Melissa Duenas and Valerie J. Bauer, well-established, multifaceted makers of media compressing a road trip, photography, and writings into the pair's fourth zine release called From Phoenix to San Antonio. To go with the exhibit and zine release here at Altura LA, we've curated a pairing of podcasts and artists to expand on the content and stories you might not get from just picking up their zine. What was a marketing assignment that ran parallel with personal Southwest intrigue, the two ladies sit down with Diego and Adrian to speak on many points from their trips and zines. The girls explain why they trekked between Phoenix, Arizona and San Antonio, Texas, how they are redefining Americana by being female people of color doing white American man things, and some readings of writings in the zine with many backstory tangents. There's also Valerie's constant need to stop for animals that we obviously have to discuss, Melissa's family connections to where the border bends, and much more. All while drinking tea and watching Speed. Real quick before we start, shout out to our supporters Calidad Beer, Madre Mezcal, and Orgullo Wine. Thank you so much for backing our space and our projects. We appreciate it very much. And now, the Altura Podcast. Happy to be here. <laughs> oh yeah, did we clap for that? Hey, <laughs> welcome. Let's Thanks for go. having us. Uh, but th- thanks for coming. Thanks for for picking Altura to to host your your first uh, zine release. We're super excited to have you guys. I'm just real. here for the free tea. <laughs> <laughs> this is a tea only podcast it's in the dark for nobody it's we're somewhere. having tea <laughs> and it's dark <laughs> and there was batman pizza and we're watching speed <laughs> oh, yeah. all of this is true <laughs> um so real quick can we get some intros on you ladies uh you, background who you are where you come from and you know um and then some valerie's motioning are. to me as in you go first friend so i could um brainstorm what i'm about to say <laughs> Um, so yeah, my name is Melissa Duenas. I'm a San Diego native based in LA. Um, I am, I do a lot of things. I would like to call myself a perpetual dabbler. So, uh, yeah, I do photography. Um, I do podcast producing as my profession. Um, I don't know. I'm always having random different projects. I DJ, a lot of folks know me as a DJ and record collector, and yeah, I, I, for, I went to graduate school for journalism at USC, so I do have a formal background, but I don't know, all the stuff I've been doing with Valerie came way before any of that. So yeah, I think that's it. Cool. And okay. I like tea. <laughs> um, and Valerie, Valerie. Uh, uh, cool my name please. is Valerie J. Bauer, and I'm a photographer um, based in Long Beach. I grew up in Wilmington. Um, California that's in the harbor area of LA uh, for those people who don't know Um, and uh, yeah I just I like to make zines and just document what I see Um, you know things in LA like every day um, this is train wrecking Uh, (laughs) no I mean this is so this is like when you talk to me. This right. is like I, I thought you had to read your own name is, off of the zine. I was oh, yeah. like, oh, she well, read really? it? Yeah. The My two. name is Valerie um, J. Bauer. <laughs> She's all following with her fingers. Yeah. I'm more visual. I'm more visual. So, um, right. Same. <clears throat> right. Oh, I mean, it's a little that, bit harder for that's, me. That's just how people communicate sometimes. Yeah. Really, it's easier than. Yeah. Like, yeah. I never but, thought uh, I'd do this. Yeah. Wait, I mean, it's something I. Let's just go into my issues. So <laughs> <laughs> that's just something I got to work on. This is where it's Because I can't yeah, use that as an excuse. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the age of five, <laughs> Valerie opening this up just with her vulnerability, just cracking this open. It was the tea. It's I the tea. tea. Yeah. It's but, the mint tea. Right. The tea <laughs> turns something. it into a therapy session. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of, of how you express yourself, congratulations to the two of you. Um, this is your expression. This is your yeah. art. Um, so congratulations. This is your fourth zine cor- together. Is that yes. correct? Right? So, uh, but this is your third through the Southwest? Yes. Mm-hmm. Being that this is your fourth, you know, we had to lead off with the both of you working together. So where did this start? <laughs> oh. Who's that? Was that the ladies next door? God. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I had some tacos I earlier. Like, dun, dun, <laughs> my, dun. Fo- my phone's ringing. Sorry. <laughs> we get that. Um, excuse the noise. We, we, you know, we, we have neighbors. You know, that's, I'll do it now. 
So this is your fourth zine release uh, together. Uh, so you, you, I mean, to have four zine releases together seems like there's some sort of chemistry here and something good. Like, where did this start and how did this flourish into road trips and, and photos? Well, so the first zine was kind of by chance in a way. So to get real deep with it, um, so our first zine, we, we went to Arizona to the Grand Canyon. And I was actually going through a breakup at the time. And I had time off of work that I was supposed to go to this wedding in Mexico with my boyfriend at the time. But we broke up, so he went without me. And I'm just like, well, what am I going to do? Sit at home and cry? I'm like, fuck that. I'm going to go do something. And I always wanted to go to the Grand Canyon. So I just literally texted Valerie, hey, you don't want to go to the Grand Canyon? <laughs> and she said, yeah, sure, I'm down. <laughs> yeah, because I was like, yeah, I think I'm, or I think I said something like, yeah, why not? I'm on unemployment right now, so let's go. I'm not like, busy. <laughs> I ain't doing shit. <laughs> so great. it wasn't like we were going to do a zine together. The trip was like I needed to go somewhere, and we decided to like make it more of an adventure versus like just driving to the Grand Canyon. Like, I don't know how we came up with the idea of stopping at all the different cities. Was that you? Like, sh- I don't even yeah, know I how forget. that... Yeah, um, I So this is like 2018 and like April. So... Um, yeah, that's going to be already how many years? Do math. <laughs> Carry the one. Four, <laughs> there was a pandemic. 19, uh, yeah. 20, 20, 20. Oh, is it before two? I don't even know. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, we just, yeah. Ex- we made, I don't know how we came up with the idea of like making it a whole trip versus more like, days, I guess, because we had the time. So we like stopped in Sedona and like Yuma and like that little Williams. Was it that little town yeah. that Route 66? Oh, yeah. We were like near um, Flagstaff. So we just kind of made it like a whole like Arizona trip. Just took pictures and yeah. then... No real plans. No just, real plans. And then after it was just kind of came naturally that like, should we be doing a zine? Should we make a zine of this to share our experience? And Valerie had already been doing zines for a while. This was like my first zine ever. And like I was also new to photography and... I would just like to say that Valerie is such a supportive and sweet friend and she's just always been like, yeah, I do it. Or like always like pumping me up and just like down. So I was like, okay, Valerie, Valerie does this. So she thinks that my photos can go in a zine with her then I, I guess. Yeah. I guess sure. <laughs> yeah. I forget if we already had the idea for a zine like along the way or I forget where that came into place. But yeah, we just gathered all our photos and then just put it together and yeah, just that was the and then first just one. And put out your first zine. And then after that, you're like, let's do another one. Mm-hmm. And let's do another one. Pretty much. And everything, and the other two are with the South, through the Southwest, and then one in Oaxaca, correct? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think New Mexico, I forget. The order was so, it was um, the Arizona one, and then uh, Oaxaca, and then New Mexico, and then this one. Yeah. And it was, again, just like, I always wanted to go to Oaxaca and then we decided to go and like after I graduated. I was like, yeah, sure. And it's like, yeah, sure, <laughs> let's go. Shit. And they're all kind of just like an excuse to travel together. Mm-hmm. And then I think from the first trip, I think what the real chemistry is that's like <clears throat> behind the scenes that maybe comes through in the zine, but you can't really, you can't really know is that we travel well together. And I don't think that you can travel well with everybody. No. And I've had horror stories. Yeah, same. And so me and Valerie... We like to know how we know how to pinch a penny on the road, and it's like we're all eating one big meal, and that's it today, you know. And just find budget hotels and eat the free waffles, and it's just like we are very like frugal when we can be, and just also down to like get into whatever like spontaneous stuff, and just really mm-hmm. easy going. It just so easy to travel with her, so yeah, it just yeah. seemed natural. To and keep it was doing crazy it. because <clears throat> for the Arizona trip, that was like our first time traveling together so it's like that was like for any two friends like that's like a big risk because we yeah we never done it before so it was like that could have went either of two ways like i mean that could make or break a relationship yeah a relationship a friendship so dude that's a that's a trip that you just randomly Let's go on a trip. Yeah. Okay, let's hang out. And now you're four zines in. Mm-hmm. Um, but it just seems like you, you're gravitating towards the Southwest. So this this next scene that's coming up, it's from Phoenix <laughs> to San Antonio, right? It's a very specific mm-hmm. stretch of the Southwest. Mm-hmm. Why did you pick this spectrum to highlight? Well, this one, um, 
the way this one came about was uh, this beer brand, Chihuahua, uh, wanted to work with me, and um, they wanted me to, to photograph. And they didn't really specifically say L.A., but they just wanted, like, like they'll work with photographers and then give them cases of beer, and then they'll go to, like, say, like, a car show and then have people you know, drinking it, taking like lifestyle well, are you, are type you, photos. Like while you're traveling, are you traveling with cases of beer and just kind of? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. yeah really? we did have some. Yeah. Well, not a lot, but we did have some <clears throat> pit stop beer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so can I um, travel with you guys? <laughs> <laughs> you guys sound like a lot of fun to travel. Right. Yeah. <laughs> not just the beer part, but right. like right. the frugal. You, you got luggage, yeah. part right? Too. You got you got your backpack. You got your luggage, <laughs> you got your toothpaste, you got the cases of beer. Yeah. It was perfect. Let's go. Yeah, that's all you need. Right. Um, but uh, so they wanted me to do stuff with them. And so to kind of like, <laughs> I was like, how can I stretch this and work it in our favor? So I was like, hey, me and my friend Melissa go on these road trips and we make zines. And I was trying to pitch the idea. And the girl, the marketing um, girl that I was working with was really down with it. And she was like, yeah, cool. And I kind of had to like map it out. And I kind of was like picking like their markets and stuff because they were saying that they have, you know, like um, their beer sold in like these certain areas. So I was trying to like keep that in mind and then also kind of like go with what, where we want to go and stuff. So um, yeah, it just ended up being like Phoenix, Albuquerque, El Paso, and then San Antonio. And then they had. They actually had one of the rodeo people that they were sponsoring was like a pro um, rodeo bull rider. Bull rider. Bull rider. Yeah. Um, so they kind of hooked us up and he was in San Antonio. So there was certain things that kind of like made it um, the stretch. But then it's like places that we want to go to. So it all kind of oh. like worked out. So, wow. so yeah. it, was, it was actually like a brand assignment in a sense. Yeah. Right. But it, it seems like it, it, it piques your interest. Right. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. a lot of common ground yeah you know between the southwest and i was here. like how can i make work and play yeah, so this was like kind of our first toe into that which has its own pros and cons yeah but um yeah technically this was we were on assignment for chihuahua mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but you know things change change and things fall apart so we we ended up giving them the photos of like um certain shoots that we had uh with the beers and stuff but uh, my original thing was to pitch, like, making a zine for them. And then, you know, I always wanted us to have, like, our own photos and make our own stuff, our, our own zine, and then, like, a branded one for them. But, you know, people change positions at jobs, right. and that marketing girl who hooked it up ended up leaving, and it just kind of, whatever, they mm -hmm. just paid for our trip and Done. the photos. and They got some beer photos yeah. and... Shouts to that girl, yeah. though. <laughs> yeah, I know. And you got an awesome zine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you do. So. This is beautiful, though. Um, I, so, And you said that it kind of sort of, sort of <laughs> connected with places that you wanted to go anyway, mm -hmm. correct? So why, why did you, other than, you know, there being Chihuahua, what, what were the other aspects of trying to go this route and going to those specific cities? I think we've been to, I think, well, this trip, we, we had been to Arizona and New Mexico already. So, like, it, this trip, we focused more heavily on Texas. And um, I've never been to El Paso and always wanted to go. My grandma on my mom's side is from Juarez and lived in El Paso shortly. So that area has always been somewhere I wanted to go. And then I love San Antonio so much. I mean, folks out there know. And so just to go and explore that expanse with Valerie was going to be kind of new to us. And then revisiting, I mean, think we have such fond memories in Arizona and New Mexico as well. Um, so we were just kind of like to go back there and like also to, meet up with people that we hadn't met up with before okay so I, I i was lucky enough to check out the zine before the release thank you i appreciate the preview uh but there, there's a lot there's a lot in there like i was going through it and i was like wait wait we have we have cowboys we have native americans we have aliens we have lowriders mm -hmm. and beer walk us through the layout of the zine like is, is it is there something specific is there a specific order or is it intuition or is it a mixture of both and and what's that journey through the zine and how did you figure out that layout there is so originally the way i laid it out was um just kind of like all scrambled so everything was like mixed in and you're just kind of looking at everything you know page by page and um but melissa you know suggested that we do it 
in a more of like a linear layout where it's like starting from oh, more like geographical so yeah, it's like we're like going from this city to trip, this side to it the order of the trip right. um which i think turned out way better and then even with the writing like it just it made more sense too and you just kind of like as you're looking through it like you can you're kind of like going along the journey with us a little bit but um yeah there was so many other photos that like we both loved and wanted to include, but then it would just be like this giant yeah. zine. This is already like a lot for us. So, um, right. And, and like, is that hard to edit down? I mean, kind of, yeah, you know. because we just want to make sure like based off of like our experience and the memories, like we want to make sure like, like the horses that we saw, like we want to make sure we include these certain points in there that, right. that were important to the, to the trip. So, right. But even though Valerie loves horses, we can't have like four spreads of horses. You <laughs> yeah, know? exactly. So I mean, it just it. I'm mean, in the sense. I mean, that why, why not? <laughs> why it's like, not? what the fuck? What, you cut more horses? Wait, there were more horses. Cut? <laughs> Come on. I need more. But horses. it is very like. Um, <laughs> if you like, didn't uh, get it already, I need a thousand horses right. in here. Maybe a horse zine coming soon. Oh, Valerie is. I told her she needs to do a, a zine of all the animals on the road because okay, this is a total tangent, but trap. Traveling with Valerie means accepting the fact that anytime you see an animal on the side of a road, like a horse, a, like, oh my god, horses, yeah, horses or a cow, oh my god, cows. we have to pull over and take pictures. <laughs> and that. then if I don't know what it is, I'm like, oh my god, she animals. starts slowing down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh animals. So you just have to. Like that's just what you know. Yeah. If you, it's not going to work if you don't accept that. You know. But just, the animals of the road. <laughs> I'm telling <laughs> you. <laughs> She needs a zoo. Yeah, the animals of the Southwest. The, yeah. the animals like, of the ten. Oh wait, was that? Oh, what are those llamas? Remember we got oh, yeah. the, we got chased by the llama owner. Mm -hmm. I think was it llamas or is that the tall? Al, are alpacas alpaca. and llamas? Are they not the same thing? I don't think oh, so. I gosh. think they're, they're somewhat different. I mean, I, I don't think you're gonna offend the alpaca, you know, Ooh, community. Yeah. community. So well, <laughs> one of those creatures we saw like in front of a house. And then we, of course, Valerie wanted to stop and take pictures. And then we took some pictures and then we like left and we started driving down the road. And then we see this big like truck chasing after us. And this lady comes up to us. She's like, why were you taking pictures of my animals? What the fuck? Blah, blah, blah. And we're just like, oh, they were cute. She's like, they're not cute. They'll be aggressive. They're guard animals. She's like, that's very common around here. You guys need to watch out. Don't be going up to people's property and taking pictures of their animals. And we're like. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Okay, bye. <laughs> okay, bye. Yeah. Okay, bye. Like, gotta go. <laughs> <Dude. I know. laughs> no, they really are cute. No, they are cute, though. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's not in the zine. That's not in that the zine. That's in, in our... New Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. Right. New Mexico, the last one. God. I mean, but, but that that's the approach that you're taking on this road trip, right? Like, it's just... Let's see what we find. Let's go mm -hmm. talk to these people. We we rolled up to this, you know, Native American shop. Let's go see what the deal is. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, uh, there's somebody taking photos. Let's go talk to them or cowboys, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty brave, I think. You know, some people are scared to do that. You know, it's just, well, let's just stay in the car. Let's just take pictures from afar mm -hmm. and we're good. Uh, what, what makes you go do that? What makes you like, and are you scared? Are you scared to do that? I don't think we've ever been scared. I think the... The context is so important, even if it doesn't. I think we started incorporating some of my writing, so we give context. But even before that, like knowing the context is like, I think important to the work, you know. And it's like, then it's like a step removed. There is some p pictures that are just like straight voyeur kind of stuff from afar, but to like make that step of like approach and connection, mm -hmm. I think even if it's for a brief moment, we find that so fulfilling. Yeah, and like, you have some of those stories in here, right? Some of the writing that's also mm -hmm. included in the zine mm -hmm. kind of goes into some of the what the the photos you see, and it tells sort of that that special it's connection like, you had with someone. Yeah, and, like the little interactions. All right. Oh, well, can, can do you mind if I read one of these? Is that okay. okay. Or should we make people buy should the zine I, so that they can? Yeah. If you want to, I'm gonna. Wait, I wanted you to read Gutierrez Ranch. I, okay. I think it's pretty interesting, and this goes back to you know Valerie and her animal uh, love <laughs> slash problem. So, uh, so if we could, Animals. right? So Animals. if we could, uh, I I think when you, when okay. you write these out, it, I think it's interesting that they're just so direct. Sometimes people write poetry or they want you to infer stuff. This is uh, this takes me there. This yeah, really takes me there. I know. I feel feel like someone. I think it was Aaron Fraser. He because I sent him a New Mexico zine and. 
when that's when we first started putting my writing in the zines and he was like it's like a cross between like like field notes stream of consciousness and like I don't know what else but I felt like he described it because I'm not really trying to like do a certain style it's just trying to take people there and like share an experience and be evocative but yeah this is called Gutierrez Ranch um okay the horses aren't shy they walk right up to us greet us smell us beckon us to ride their eyes loom with the sweet sad- sadness and yet they move with the power that is both graceful and intimidating they follow us around sniffing at our ears nipping at our hair val doesn't want to leave <laughs> but we've been the horses farewell <laughs> <laughs> see i get everything from that everything that you talked yeah. about the idea that Valerie loves animals. We're in this space with them, and they also have they they have they have personalities. Mm-hmm. And it kind yeah. of shines to that. I think it's I think that's tight. It's really cool that you did. I this. really like the the paragraph about the eyes and the sadness. It's yeah. I was around horses recently too, and it's it very concisely kind of sums up that that feeling that I got of you know they're such beautiful, powerful animals, and mm-hmm. like their eyes are so expressive. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I, it's I really like, like oh that. sweet, but don't kick me. Yeah, you will kill me, or they could throw you off and kill you. <laughs> Yeah. With this, you know, on this trip, are you going with the mentality of like journalism? Are you going with documentary? I understand that there's an assignment as well as, you know, in marketing uh, that you guys are trying to do with this beer. Is there a mindset that you go in there like, okay, I'm going to document all this space and document this time? Or do you just go through and feel it? Like, I think it's like for me a little bit of both. Like, um, you know, like I, the photo of the horse with my shadow and stuff, that, that to me feels more personal because it's like I'm in it in a way like i'm i'm there too but um yeah just we kind of just go with the flow and just like whatever we see and explore and it, you know, i think it's like that when you say like journalism it feels like so detached and we're like not detached and we want this to be so personal like valerie said where we can include this like photo of her silhouette with the horse you mm-hmm. know that's so meaningful and so like as you know now like direct into like this experience of traveling with valerie and even in here, I wrote a little bit about, like, El Paso and my grandmother. Yeah. And it's just, like, all of these things are the different things that are coming to mind as we're taking pictures. One, we're not from these areas. And we have this approach of, like, observers, but also participants, but also bringing our own personal experiences to this. We can't, like, separate ourselves completely. It's almost a hodgepodge of skills, in a sense, right? Because in that journalism aspect, journalism aspect you kind of just let things be. And you take photos and, you know, document those but you also want to apply yourself as well, which I think is super sweet and very nice because this is what you guys are feeling. And you, there's people there that are coming in with the mindset to to create and remember um, using photography, using writing, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, that's um, why I love her writing with all of this because it, it makes it so much more personal. And, and people love to read too. And it just feels more of like a diary or like a journal and in addition to the photos. So it just gives it like a really... <clears throat> like you said, like a sweet like touch. Okay, so I mean, there are a lot of extras. I mean, you mentioned it. You know, there's a lot of stuff that you didn't put in there. There's plenty of horses that we missed out on, unfortunately. <laughs> but you know, there's there's video, there's audio, there's pictures uh, that don't make the zine, and it's unfortunate. But your zine is amazing as is. Uh, being that you're having the zine release here at Altura, LA, what are some of the extras you'll be able to experience when when you do come here? So we decided to um, put like the, together this montage of like all of the video we took on our phones um so valerie like edited it all together and like it's pretty funny actually (laughs) um my favorite part of that which i mean my friends have seen this because they follow me on instagram but there's like this scene of us when we're at the Petite Strawberry Festival on a roller coaster, and I, like I do the selfie view, and you see me like screaming at the top of my head <laughs> on the roller coaster. <laughs> on the yeah. roller coaster, but there's just like there's just again that personal and then like documentary kind of approach to the videos where we're like observers, but then just like our goofy stuff. Um, yeah, I don't even know, <laughs> but it, was, it went on in Valerie's mind when it, she was editing it all together. But it was pretty <laughs> <laughs> and there's that whole sequence that's just. Yeah. Really I love funny. it. Yeah, it made me think like, oh, we should have done more like more personal videos. But, you know, we didn't know we were going to put it together like that. But it was like now I'm like, oh, I wish we had more. But but yeah, I, I can't wait for people to see like that video, too. And on the screen, because, you know, we've only done the zines and we've done like a little video before that um, where they included some of the footage. But it's like people will be able to watch it and see it and then look at the zine and. 
hear the sounds and you know of the DJ and like just everything it just we chose um our friend Aaron out of San Antonio because well we visited his bar and there's a story which includes him in this as well and I actually invited another DJ from there Renee um Sunny Boy but he can't make it so then I had local local celeb Dave Salvaje because I just want this to be in his stories no (laughs) no because um he has a lot of music from like I know the southwest region and Seoul and stuff so I thought he could do that kind of justice even though he's not from there but in terms of his collection and just like playing um you know just different like Spanish music as well because I feel like that's such a soundtrack to the lives out there too nice so yeah that reminds me of a question I have for you guys what Mm -hmm. was the soundtrack to this road trip I know you both are lovers of music and it's a part of what you do uh, Melly, well, what M- was Melissa the... specifically, maybe more. I'm yeah, not too what sure. was the playlist? so we ha- we had two um, playlists. Aaron. Yeah, Bob Dominguez made us a playlist, and Aaron Frazier made us a playlist. And Aaron had made us a playlist for Arizona already. Oh yeah, and um, oh no, New Mexico. New Mexico. And so he made us another one for this trip, and it was like just I think we posted it last time the New Mexico one. Maybe we'll ask him to post this one, but it's kind of like he because he travels so much for tour he thinks a lot about like what sounds good to like these visual landscapes so i think a lot of the songs are very like evocative for just driving and listening and like there's some country music and just i don't know there's random stuff on there but he always like turns me on to new stuff but the one thing that was funny about both of their playlists is that they both had a song by bjork and I am a long time not fan of Bjork. Oh. <laughs> but after the, the, those two songs, I was like, oh, these songs are tight. I was like, whoa, like, I guess Bjork's tight or something. Like, <laughs> I can like two songs of Bjork. This yeah. is fine. And, and so it was just funny that both of them had put songs and I was just, and I had never thought I would like any of her music. I was like, oh, this is cool. This is like a um, an unspoken, un, like unpopular opinion I've held because I have a lot of friends <laughs> who are huge fans of hers and then we also played playlists that i had on spotify there's this one i have um that is like all like garage psych country that i love so much that was perfect there's especially like this one guy named jim sullivan who is like the david axelrod of country music pretty much like in terms of like the soundscapes and the space in his music but this guy disappeared in the desert so he oh, was wow. like, and so we were listening to him outside of Roswell and he disappeared in the desert because he believed in aliens. He has a song called UFO. And then we, they don't know, his family don't know what, what happened. Wow. <laughs> wow. So yeah, that yeah. felt very fitting. And then the other time we just kind of, then we get tired of everything on Spotify. You don't get service. So we start listening to Sirius XM or whatever mm-hmm. the fuck. And then oh, from, the 90s? And then 90s on like, 9? Yeah, <laughs> 90s on 9. We started going on this fucking, like, um, crazy binge of, like, nostalgic music, like, and then specifically singing out loud to, like, Natalie and Bruglia. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's fantastic. All the guilty, guilty pleasure songs. And I think at one point during that, we were, like, started pulling up, like, the karaoke versions on <laughs> YouTube because it's, so, like, stretch of nothingness. <laughs> right. Oh, I mean, those are the hardships of traveling, though, yeah. right? Like, road trips. Oh, stuff. yeah. I mean, the music kind of gets you through it, right? Mm-hmm. Are there any other hardships, like, of, of, of road tripping that you think... Uh, you Probably know. just trying to eat healthy a lot. Oh, I that's guess tough. We, that's we, so we, tough. Yeah, on the road. I mean, I guess we kind of did because we'll like we'll stop at markets and stuff and pick up like fruits and avocados and is avocado a fruit? No, um, it is. It is. So fruits. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So. That probably is just eating on the road, I guess. Valerie's being very humble with her healthy eating. We, we, <laughs> we eat pretty he- like we do. Are you foraging in the desert? <laughs> and oh, look I at this papaya. <laughs> well, it's because we also do, we'll like go to grocery stores and get like a little like ice pack, so we have like oh, fresh have, fruit yeah, and okay. stuff. So Valerie will make a fruit. Well, I remember one time she made this bomb ass fruit salad. So she's in the hotel room. Oh, cutting. Cutting, cutting fruit with a plastic <laughs> knife. And then she puts it in the, like, nice glass um, cups they give you for water. Like the tumblers? So she puts the layers, like kiwi, uh-huh. strawberry, Hi. mango. Then we, go oh. to, then we go to the pool, and it looks I like that. you yeah. should have paid $12 yeah. for that. Oh, okay. You're coming with the it skills. It was fancy. Yeah. 
Okay, presentation means a lot. I mean, yeah. you're like, oh, this feels great. I yeah. need this right now. Yeah. I mean, that's the road trip, though, right? Yeah. That's the tough part. I, I remember that we were in a parking lot in Roswell, and um, we bought, like, you know, like, sandwiches from the, like, 7-Eleven or something like that. And I remember we had an avocado, and we were cutting the avocado and adding it into yeah. that, whatever that sandwich was. And Okay, wow. In the, like, I remember, yeah. like, putting it, like, arranging it on the dashboard. So it's just, like... This is what it's like. Rose. This is Valerie. So she's like, I'm having a hard time eating healthy. But then Valerie's like, oh, we have an avocado. Let's put some in that. And we bust it out right now in the heat. <laughs> just, yeah, just cut it in the car. And yeah. That's amazing, though. I mean, yeah. you know, you got to make it your own. It's just so yeah. fun. Yeah. It, I mean, yeah, it's fun to be on the road and like, yeah. <laughs> right. I, I, I mean, Can I tell the cookie muffin story? <laughs> was oh, yes. that uh, no, you have to now. New Mexico? Or, well, that was from the New Mexico trip, but yes, go for so it. So Valerie okay. takes, because you know we're not trying to pass up on anything free, right? Okay. So this is like before the pandemic. <laughs> Wait, so do we need to talk about the chocolate mushroom? Because <laughs> that's kind of what kicked it off. That's true. This is not too, maybe too long of a story. <laughs> no, it's never too long here. Let's go. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, the mushrooms. <laughs> So this was from our 2019 trip to New Mexico, and um, we'll have some of those zines too for sale, and like we'll bring it on the for the show, cool. so you guys can look through it. But um, yeah, Melissa had these uh, chocolate shrooms. You had to name me, right, Melissa? <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, Melissa had the stumbled upon wow. who <laughs> lives on. No, she outed her real quick. So, no, there's no Melissa's. <laughs> No, I'm they, I mean, they're, uh, yeah, they're right, yeah. chocolate dipped. Uh, Portobello. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Melissa made Cracker. me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it's gonna be like telling your dreams. You can't tell about your shrooms trip because it just doesn't make sense. Right. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, "What? It's what like, is that? You had to be there. <laughs> you had to be there." <laughs> but the one part that I think will come across related to the food stuff is that, you know, if there's free muffins or whatever in the the lobby, we take them, right? So we're, we're on mushrooms and we're sitting, we're in Chaco Canyon, which is this like ancient site of the indigenous people there. So we're walking around these ruins in like 90 something degree heat with umbrellas and high as fuck and we sit <laughs> on a, like we find some shade on this like bench and we're just staring there's, there's spiritual energy yeah. just we're just absorbing the spiritual energy <laughs> swirling looking at this beautiful stone wall of like nothingness but everythingness and we're like oh it's time we should have a snack right and so Valerie opens up her purse and then she pulls out a crumbled muffin and she goes wait hold on and then she takes the wrapper of the muffin and packs the crumbs. Cause <laughs> she packs the crumbs, so it's so tight. It's like this little circle. And she goes, "Look, it's a cookie." And then she splits it in half. That's pretty good. That's normally, resourceful. That's very okay, resourceful. You, you could probably throw it away, right? I mean, any normal, level-headed person will probably be like, "This muffin's no good. Let me throw it away." And I said, "No, wait a minute. Wait a minute." Well. I'm Filipino, and my mom makes these things called um, pol, pol. I think it's in. Um, you guys have it too. Or, um, those cookies. That, it's like dust. They call it like a dust cookie. Like, polvoron. Yeah. Polvoron. So um, she makes those, and she has like a little thing, like a little. Like a compressor, like a yeah, presser. like a, right. and you just yeah, and then you wrap it in the thing. So my idea was like. Hey, it's just one of like the dust cookie. <laughs> That's awesome. <bro. laughs> and then I was just like, well, let's just like compress it, and it's good as new. Valerie's right. ancestors so, speaking. Her. <laughs> yeah, it came. It came through. So. Wow. I mean, you it re, was you a muffin. resourcefulness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so you're right. gonna be like the hottest new food, like pressed muffins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. So it, it was, was good. We ate it. It we was it. for sure a high idea, but. Um, <laughs> It worked, and it was a snack Dude. in Chaco Canyon. Gave us sustenance to keep journey <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, and then I think in that um, area, too, there was, like, two stones that were like this. <laughs> like, you know, giant mm -hmm. stones that were like this. Like, like a tent. Like yeah. A, okay. And then so we <laughs> we crawled in it. 
<laughs> and ate lunch in there, and we're just like, we live here now. <laughs> that sounds so awesome. That's awesome. No. I was at that moment that I realized if the apocalypse happens, you want to be with Valerie. Yeah. Like, you want to be with Valerie because we were in this. <laughs> 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 we were in found, like, shelter. We, we yeah, were in this shelter. And then here we are, like, with crackers and avocado, like, in the middle of the desert, having a nice little picnic. Like, fun. I was like, Valerie's the one. Yeah. You want to be where Valerie is. And then somewhere in New Mexico, too, on that same trip, um, there was like a forest area, right? Remember? Oh, yeah. Um, it was like a stream and like more like green and foresty. People hiked La Concha, there. I think it was called. And then there was like another little like, you know, it was like a flat, like round area of like dirt. And it was kind of like covered by... Um, like trees, trees or mm-hmm. bush and they kind of like peeked in like a like a curtain i was like oh my god this is like a little house and so we just <laughs> wow. went, we went in there too and had so lunch so you moved in there also yeah so mm-hmm. i was like okay, so you have two homes we'll sleep right? there this yeah, is the living rooms room. in Mex- new mexico <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we could make a home anywhere wow so, yeah right. they're not gonna leave altura dude this is just they're like oh look at this yeah well, like, oh, it's it's tea somewhere <laughs> I'll survive anywhere. Oh, when she pees somewhere, it's automatically. <laughs> no, when she has tea somewhere. Oh, yeah, when she pees no. somewhere, I was like, wait, it's yeah, hers? I'm going to okay. pee in the corner. Wow. It's like, wow. this is I mine. I live here now. Yeah, I live here <laughs> <This> now. <is> <laughs> yeah. But I think that's just part of it, too. It's like, you know, like we're just having fun and we're just exploring and um, we're creative. So we just have this crazy imagination. So. Yeah, I mean, I like this. this I like fun. this dynamic, though. I mean, you know, so the creativity, the, the bouncing of ideas and stuff, and randomly going on a road trip and turning it into a zine. Yeah. And here you are, fourth zine in, and it just seems like it's still rolling. I think because it's like always that curious spirit, you know. And I think mm-hmm. travel for me, my life is like so rigid. I'm a crazy schedule kind of person, and I'm like always like overextended with my time and like going on trips and especially with Valerie is like a way for me to like be creative and have fun and like let go and it's like have fun not in the like go out party sense like I do Mm -hmm. that all the time here with my friends you know it's like to have like new experiences and just like to keep that curious and like Valerie said like kind of playful childlike nature like that's what you do when like you're a kid it's like you know you're like in a park you're like this is my house (laughs) I mean we're like two grown ass women like that time we were totally sober just like (laughs) it's like playing house in the forest yeah exactly you know just normal 30 year old things (laughs) 30 plus year old things that's what you do when you're not married and don't have kids yeah exactly (laughs) yeah and then we found out there was like a somebody so, so there's there was a bear. like a bear. And we, so we're just like, we booked we left. it. And then yeah. We left. And then I was also wearing neon. So I was like, okay, I'm a target here. So <laughs> we, oh, were, we both were both wearing neon. neon. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, there's just always like something with our with mm-hmm. our trip. So, right. That's yeah. just a good energy. It just seems like, I mean, I think you need that, right? For 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 uh, uh, assignments like yeah. this, right? Um, to keep that energy going. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's 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 stamina also involved in this. I mean, totally, it's a road trip. Yeah, totally. And then plus traveling, like you can't really, you can try to plan as much as possible. And we, we kind of do as, as much as we can. But at the same time, there's just like, you have to be flexible. You have to bend or you have to be uncomfortable at moments. And I think we both do, do that. And we're just both like, kind of just go with the flow. So that's why it, it works too. And yeah. yeah, no one's like picky. It's like okay, if we're gonna eat French fries, we're eating picky. French fries. Like yeah. <laughs> we're eating fucking sourdough toast. That's what's happening. Like yeah. it's like you shitty just, coffee, whatever. It's like that stuff. Yeah, like doesn't bother me or mm-hmm. her, and like just rolling with that and like sleep too. Like you're saying, it's a stamina thing. Like especially on this trip because this was like the most scheduled trip because of the assignment aspect that mm-hmm. we've had. This is like the least loose trip yeah. we've had, and so. Like, just the schedule and having to get to a city by a certain time was new to us. Mm-hmm. We're like, oh, we actually have to be there yeah. this time. And Which yeah. was kind of like, I think by the middle or the end of it, we were like, never again, you know? Like, we, it's just better when it's just free. You kind of felt tied down. Yeah, yeah, and then it's like, I felt pressure to, like, you know, deliver and, like, all that stuff with, with the brand and stuff. So it, it kind of, like, it gave it a little bit of a different feel i mean we obviously we had so much fun already but um it just adds a different element to it which is cool but um 
yeah, it just was like, yeah, I think we need to be more free next time. Right. Because um, that's just how we flow. And yeah. yeah. If someone wants to give us money just to like go and do our own thing and we don't have any deliverables for them, yeah, yeah. we're going to take it. Yeah. But yeah. Open to sponsorships. Open to sponsorships. Yeah. Please it's, email us at. It did add a different <laughs> like layer of pressure and yeah. organization with like, oh, we have to take these types of photos too Mm -hmm. um and then like i don't shoot digitally that much but like we brought digital cameras too and so for all like the chihuahua beer stuff we had digital photos for them and like uploading it to them and getting them stuff that like on the road road, yeah there was just like that whole element that just wasn't present in Mm -hmm. our trip but i don't know like it's just kind of like we had to we we tried something new still you know what i mean like I don't know. We never done that before. Let's see how it works. And Mm -hmm. like now we kind of know like our boundaries and like what works for us. And through the trip too, I was like, make sure you get stuff for you, you know, like just let's make sure we get our, our photos. And like, you know, even though we are there for them, it's like my other thing was like, it's mainly still like our trip, but yeah. Yeah. It's just looking at the zine. I have it in front of me. Just, you guys did a really beautiful job. And there's, there's like a lot of layers of documentation, you know, you're documenting spaces and people and things that maybe other folks might just walk past or not yeah. you know, take the time to meet people and learn a story about them. But also you're, you're documenting like a part of your lives mm-hmm. and seeing and hearing you guys talk about, you know, these stories that maybe aren't in the book. It's really beautiful. Yeah. How do you guys think you'll feel about these trips, maybe 20, 30, 40 years down the line and having a book? Or a zine oh. that documents that and says, you know, this is this was a slice of your life. Like, I mean, I, I already feel good about it. And I imagine, like, still feeling the same. I hope we're still going on trips as, mm-hmm. like, older women. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know, like, what the stamina or whatever. But I feel like that's something that, like, gives me a sense of, like, freedom. Especially when I feel, like, cooped up, you know, like, to explore and just, yeah. like talk to strangers and like be with someone that is just in, like in a, in the same space as you. Oh, you, you, you'll have to go check on your houses that you have in New Mexico anyway. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. But we already, Valerie we're is just like, Valerie's it. like, yeah, I was looking over. <laughs> it's like bear. we should go to, Man- we're trying to get a house in Montana <laughs> yeah. now and the Dakotas. There's just so much of like, in terms of like travel still and like areas we want to explore, like, large scale travel that we'd love to do and even just more in the u.s Mm -hmm. and this is something we haven't really touched on even though like most of our trips have been in the southwest we like would love to go to like nebraska and idaho like why the fuck not like especially i feel like growing up in california it's like it's so easy to be like city centric and california centric Mm -hmm. and like going out in the southwest it's just like to small ass towns that no one gives a fuck about you know what i mean and then even just like other cities and seeing like how they live and what the kind of pace of life is and it's really like humbling and it really like opens up your world view and like it's a privilege to travel and yeah. travel so freely and i also when we first went on our trip like i felt like oh i always needed to travel like with a guy you know, and so to like go with my friend and feel safe and feel like we could do this as like women and like, I don't know, just I always thought of like road trips as like something that white men do, Mm -hmm. like they go on the road and find themselves. And I'm like, actually, me and my friend went on the road and I fucking found myself. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I think the key word is like Americana, right? Yeah. Yeah. I always associate Americana with the idea of like the music first, right? Which is like, you know, Southern country folk, bluesy stuff that really don't involve people of color. But the idea that you're using the word Americana and you're doing something that's Americana oriented, which is a road trip, mm-hmm. I think is dope. And and you're right. Usually I think of like a road trip. It's like, oh, you know, I'm going to go find myself or it's a sabbatical because you have that extra income to go do that. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. we don't really have that. You, you ladies are living on, you know, avocados and... <laughs> And shout portab- out avocados. Shout out portobello mushrooms <laughs> <Yeah>. dipped <laughs> in chocolate, right? Chocolate covered portobello. Right. Well, I mean, you're, you're kind of sort of changing that mindset, which I, I, I adore. I think it's yeah. great. But- and hopefully other women will see what we're doing and be like, oh, maybe me and my friends will want to take a road trip and explore and, and kind of like have that freedom of not being 
scared. I don't know, I think we had ever been afraid Mm-mm. at any point. Um, I think maybe one time in Oaxaca where I felt like we we're, it was late night and I felt like maybe we were getting followed, but it, it wasn't, we weren't even getting followed. Oh, so and it was we just, were in the red light district and we didn't know. I think so, yeah. We were in the wrong side of town. Yeah, so that would, I mean, that's just like a different yeah. thing, but it's like we, we are smart and don't want to put ourselves in any thing that we're not comfortable with so it's like we never i never felt that Mm -mm. go on an adventure yeah leave Leave. yeah go go be uncomfortable exactly Mm -hmm. and i mean besides like the the mushrooms it's not like we're drinking or going out really or doing like that so it's like we do have like a clear mind and to like make good judgment and like it is like I said, like a, a time for like that freedom of like, I don't know, the regular things you do in your own city. So I will say it's not like we're just going on like partying or something. Yeah. You know, it's a very different mindset. It's just like we'll be in the hotel room watching like Family Guy and yeah. we'll, drinking tea and then go to sleep, wake up early. <laughs> or like a typical night um, would be like, yeah, we're at the room. Um, and we're just both like writing notes. Oh yeah. Like, you're writing your really poetic <laughs> deep thoughts. And then I'm just like, we did this today and my shirt was red. And it's just like very <laughs> like on the nose, like very just but exactly that, what w- we were doing, what we saw. But, but I, yeah. I will say though that Valerie's notes do inform the writing though too. Cause it's like, these aren't just like my literal road thoughts. Like they are like edited and I do like because I don't remember everything and my notes sometimes aren't comprehensive but Valerie takes very like fact-based notes like we met this person we stopped here we went to this Mm -hmm. city to this city so it's like I incorporate some of those things like when I think about like the writing and like or if like you forget someone's name then I'm like I think I have it hold Mm -hmm. on (laughs) yeah so it's it's pretty helpful but I mean I guess I do that too just to remember the trip and when I'm looking at my images and I'm like oh okay I remember where that was or who that was or whatever. So. I mean, that's an accuracy too. Right? Yeah, like Valerie is the, the one that, that's like, the I journalism remember aspect too, on, right? on our Arizona trip, she was doing that and I was like, that's so smart, you mm-hmm. know? And then, like, I think consciously in New Mexico, I was like taking more notes. I was like, maybe we'll put some of my writing in, but still not sure. And then this trip, it was like very much in my mind. So sometimes, like, when we were on like Valerie was driving, I'd just be like writing what I saw or just like trying to reflect and make sure I was like writing as much as possible. Oh, so, so she influenced you to do this in a sense, right? It's almost like, Mm -hmm. you know, it helps. So in those notes, I'm pretty sure there's stuff that you didn't know going into this road trip. My next question is, is there anything that you learned? I mean, you, you both come from the, the bigger cities in Southern California. You go to these places and you're like, wait, there's similarities here. Mm-hmm. Um, what are what are some of the differences that you experience, and what are some of the similarities that you experience? Mm-hmm. I guess like even going through um, Phoenix, like even state to state and city to city, you just you feel the the change, and and you feel like it's just very regional. Everything like music style, like just. I mean, yeah, there's similarities and like maybe a thread, but of the Southwest, but then it's like Phoenix is very specific to like Albuquerque. And then we researched New Mexico, um, the Hispano culture, remember? They, that was, I didn't even know anything about that. And um, right. what did you learn about the Hispano? Well, like, we were just listening to like a, like a, was it like, like a, a podcast? podcast with like Latino USA. They're just um, talking about, Hispano culture in New Mexico and how they're um, identify more as like from Spain or ancestors from Spain than being that close to the border and yeah. associating yeah. themselves as and then mixed Chicano, Mexicanos, with the, or just right, like um, overlap with like you know native like culture and all that and yeah right and that's uh, that's such a trip because it's like that's like the blending right uh-huh. of like that border aspect right like, totally like it's like oh you're so close to the border but you identify with europe a little more that's just kind of odd but i mean that's who they are right like mm-hmm. you don't you don't judge it you don't do anything you go in there and you just let them be who they are and you learn about it and yeah you, you know you take a couple pictures writing some mushrooms and then you <laughs> leave right? yeah, i'm trying to think of different i think for me the difference is, is the actual experience in like the space itself because especially growing up in San Diego, like you drive from San Diego to LA and it's just like nothing but just like 
buildings like there's that stretch of camp pendleton Mm -hmm. but it's owned by the military you know what i mean so it's like everything is like all marked up pretty much you know and it's like you have to drive so far to like get to like nothingness in southern california and there it's like the land is like very present to your experience in a way that i don't always feel when i'm in southern california Mm -hmm. so to me like that's the biggest difference and the biggest draw like i do feel very drawn to like the desert and like that expanse and i feel very comfortable there and in that heat like weirdly enough but i think it's no coincidence like my grandma's family is like from like waters you know what i mean and it's like i feel like it, there's some part of me like that's like in my blood and like i crave that but i feel like there's just a lot of similarities though too um and especially in el paso like thinking about tijuana and san diego and like the border identity and like meeting folks there like and my spanish is like horrible by the way but like t- trying to talk to folks and like i was like oh you know t- asking them do they speak english they're like no like one guy's telling me i was born here but i don't speak any english he's like why should i there's no one like everyone in this neighborhood in el paso to speak spanish and just i'm like oh that's like something you would find like over in san isidro like in tijuana area by tijuana like there's just that kind of that border culture that I feel is very like similar as well. And then you can literally see it. Yeah. See Mexico, like in a lot of parts of um, El Paso, it's like, it's right. It's right there. It's right there. Yeah. What one thing I was struck that I wrote about in, in here about El Paso that was really striking to me again, thinking about the land is that like the Tijuana San Diego border is like this straight ish line. Right. But then the El Paso Juarez is like this jagged because mm-hmm. it follows the Rio Grande, you know, and it's just like literally like following the land, following the route that's mm-hmm. like in the land itself. And it's just like that to me is like just so striking mm-hmm. when you're driving around, you're seeing like how jagged it's like, wait, am I like you can't look like straight oh, or because, to the side because the border from california all the way to that tip of texas is a straight line Pretty right much, yeah. and then at that point the, oh yeah it's they, like right at the corner mm-hmm. exactly it starts following the river and it's like it's crazy though to see it though you know because it's like you're peering over into waters and then it's right. like if you look to the left it's like am i still looking at the u.s or am i looking at mexico like depending mm-hmm. on where you are you know right. it's just it's kind of like mind-boggling um we didn't go to waters and for we didn't have our passports we didn't oh, think yeah. to go um, we heard a lot of like mixed things about going. I was like, I don't know. I also hear mixed things about going to Tijuana and I go there all the time. So we kind of didn't know what to do with that information, but we didn't have people there to take, a, you know, anyways, we didn't have our passports and mm-hmm. we didn't have like, we didn't have it set up to do yeah. that. So we didn't go. I think time too was like yeah. a thing, but. Oh, the damn assignment. The damn assignment. <laughs> damn assignment. Get Luckily, in the way. Luckily it brought us out there, but then it's like, yeah, um. Actually, we got to meet so and yeah. at 6 p.m. in San Antonio or whatever. Yeah. yeah, there was points where I was stressed. So I was like, oh, my God. You know, but right. we pulled it off. We, we, we got it done. And we had our fun, too. Um, this is my favorite part. I like to get technical, and I like to know about your tools. Uh, I don't know if you know this. It's 2022. Uh, I'm going to play devil's advocate, but you have phones. You can easily get this story and your pictures and your videos out like that. But you ladies prefer... Film, writing, and paper. <laughs> so what, what's what's with the vintage mediums? Why why go through the zine aspect when there's a tool in your pocket that you can easily just get out? For me, I just feel like um, everything just feels like it gets lost in digital and, and online and stuff. And or or it's it like we're holding it in our hands now. You know, like we can take it with us. We can physically have like that experience like right here right now and um i think to me like that's kind of part of it you know um as opposed to just looking at it on online or in like a slideshow or something like that i mean yeah and i think also when you have like something physical it invites you to like pause and like get mm-hmm. away from screens we spend so much time on screens like yeah. said it's like i don't know you look go on instagram it's like how many cool photos do you see a day? You it's know, just it's just like a lot, a lot. It's overwhelming. And I think that's why the, like having a physical printed object still has a place in mm-hmm. our world because of the fact that we are so bombarded by digital content. So you have the time to like stop and like reflect and really sit with something, um, 
in a way that you wouldn't necessarily like digitally. And one thing I, I would probably take a picture of right now are gas prices. <laughs> and I would post that right away, right? Yeah. But now I can go back and look at when uh, gas was uh, mm-hmm. $2.87 in Texas <laughs> um, on April 9th of 2021. Yeah, and those are things that I also wanted to include too, because to me, it's like, like the road trip itself was a thing. So like the act of like, road tripping and stuff and 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 gas and all that stuff it's like very much part of like um the experience and so like when um people are looking at it they can kind of be like what is this and they're like oh it's like gas receipts and it's like that's such a huge part of like being Mm -hmm. on the road it's like you know yeah oh go ahead oh no i was just saying we're we're in these long stretches and There's points where it's like, okay, you better get gas because there's not going to be gas Mm -hmm. for like 200 miles or something, you know, or 100 or whatever. It's kind of a interesting. I didn't even make that connection. I was like, there's receipts in here. Mm -hmm. Cool, there's receipts. Oh, they used to cost that much. And then you think about it now. And that's kind of a big deal. And it's 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 symbolic of a road trip. Mm -hmm. You got to pay for gas. I mean, loves. Oh, wait, did we stop at a loves on this trip? I think so. Yeah. I think yeah, we did. That's like the best gas station. Yeah, the sign <laughs> it's is so very. Cute. Um, <laughs> they have showers, don't they? They, they got do. Showers. Like, right? We yeah. haven't had to take a shower in a loves. Okay. You know, we've been fortunate. I haven't been there yet. <laughs> haven't been there yet. Oof, yeah. <laughs> Luckily, we have rooms every day. Yeah. But um, yeah, loves is very like nostalgic now for us. <laughs> I think because it's like it's like a symbol like of right. being on the road, especially in the Southwest and. Um, yeah, and then for the cover, I wanted it to be like that sepia, mm-hmm. um, so it has more of like a southwest feel. I was gonna comment about just the color story, just in general of the photos you chose, and um, it's really beautiful and it does capture. I've driven a little bit through, you know, desert areas in mm-hmm. the southwest, and uh, you yeah. definitely captured that. In, in- and I think these zines too, like. Um, when we did our Arizona and New Mexico one, there's some people are like, oh, that's cool, you know, whatever. And then there's certain people who are like really connect with it. Like, oh, my God, I have family in mm-hmm. New Mexico or, oh, my God, I'm from New Mexico. Where can I buy this? Or, you know, I think people kind of see these areas like like California is always being photographed a lot. And yeah, especially um, L.A. In L.A. <laughs> and everything. And it's like, um. I think for other people, there's so many other people who connect to like our work and, and these projects that like, I, I just hope it has meaning to other people too. And, um, it's cool that like when people share that with us, that they really connect to it. Dude, this is great. I mean, I'm, so I grew up in San Antonio and where you, oh, okay. where y'all took pictures is, is home. So I grew up in 78228. So <laughs> I, like, uh, uh, I, w- I went to Thomas Jefferson High School. What's up? Uh, but He's no, throwing up gang signs yeah, right now. <laughs> San Anto. Uh, San Anto. Yeah, That's how it is. The 210, dude. Now um, I'm scared. But no, I, but I've I mean, never been scared. Now I'm scared. Wow. I'm scared. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to, I'm here to scare you guys. Uh, but no, I, when I see those pictures and I see some of my friends and some of the people that I know, I, I think it's it's beautiful. and it, It's just, it, I think it's crazy that all of those worlds connect now, but I'm connecting not through social. I'm connecting through a zine. Uh, mm-hmm. And and I, I love it. Um, the way you captured stuff. There's one picture in here. I don't know who took it, but there's they're shooting from the inside outside and the... You get someone watering their yard. There's a fence. Oh, yeah. Um, that looks like a neighborhood that I grew up in. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, because, you know, the whole... South side. Oh, is this the south side? Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, San Antonio kind of looks like that all around. Yeah. I on the west side, but... <laughs> that's, uh, that's Chuco, and that's his mom. That's yeah. out, We're inside his house. That's Valerie's oh. photo. So that's his mom. We right. were shooting him, and his mother was so supportive and, like, anything you guys need. Oh, my And gosh. pulling out all his... Um, so sweet. ...hats and all these different outfits that he has for us and then she his was shoe just rack, like yeah everything his, his jacket <laughs> and then she just kind of like left us and i just noticed that she was watering out front and then i just saw it through the screen and i thought that was like a special moment too because it's sort of like these kind of quiet moments that like you are like familiar with and um yeah i just, right. I just wanted to kind of right capture that too like yeah, I mean, for me, considering that I, I recognize this architecture, mm. um, but also the, you know, the large l- lots that are, you know, involved in, in, you know, owning a home, you know, especially on the south side or renting, but also, you know, the, 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 the iron rod door 
oh, is like uh-huh. a big thing as well. Uh, but I, I just connect with this. This is just kind of cool. Um, but yeah, I, I, I get this vibe. Like this is very, oh, cool. this is very private. This is oh, from yeah. inside the house. And somebody's just watering the yard, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. midday. Personally, I appreciate this photo. So it's kind of oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, thank you. So yeah. But yeah, but no, I, I... And have you been to the Strawberry Festival? I have. I've been a couple of times. Okay, yeah. Because so we were there for that bull rider who was... Um, Jorge. Jorge, who was... Um, he was part of the Yeah, Chihuahua. he was part yeah. of the rodeo. sponsored by Chihuahua. And then... Um, so we were starting to tell people that we were meeting that we we're going to go there. And then everybody was like, oh, my God, like, I haven't been there in years. I grew up or, going to the Strawberry yeah, Festival. We, uh-huh. I had no idea. Yeah. Like, it was like a big thing. And then you go there and you're like, whoa. Like, I mean, we were stuck at, not stuck, but we were in the rodeo section for so long. Like, from basically the sun hadn't went down yet and the sun is already down. So we're like, from beginning to end of the whole rodeo show, we were like there documenting it. And then at the end... Um, the bull rider Jorge was like, oh, we're going to go around the fair. Do you want to come with us? And so he bought us some Miller lights or something. And we're just like <laughs> going around with his family, his wife and his daughter. And they were so sweet. Yeah. And his daughter, like I wrote about that experience. Yeah. With yeah. them. This photo is fantastic. This is, this is him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's him, his daughter. daughter. Yeah. That's like the sweetest picture though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I had to write about her cause she was so, she was so like, her name is Mia and she's, she had such a strong personality and she was like that little creature that she won. She was insistent on winning it herself. And her dad was like, Oh, I want to do it herself. So she won that herself, you know? And then we go on a Ferris wheel with her and her mom. It's her first time on a Ferris wheel. It's just like so sweet. Like we just hung out with them and like, that's how it is like welcoming. He was just like, mm-hmm. sure. You want to come along with us? And we're like, okay. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah, and then she named her little creature Alien because she saw Valerie's Alien Roswell t-shirt. Yeah, I was wearing my (laughs) Roswell shirt. (laughs) So I told you there were aliens involved. This is great. Yeah. Oh, Dude, that's just so much going on. Right. Was that... Was that your first rodeo? I don't know. Is that a yeah. cheesy question? To no, ask? that was our first, my first rodeo. Was that your first rodeo? I never um, seen bull riding. I I don't know. How was how was that experience? I, I've been to a rodeo and I remember just tripping out at the whole thing. Like it's just such a different thing compared to like. Did you wear the right shoes? LA, like, <laughs> no, you just were just like regular old. Sh- well, what we didn't know, so we didn't know oh. what kind of access we were going to get, and we what came up there and we we're just like okay, and and so we didn't get know that we were going to be able to go into like. The, what do they call it? The pen or the pit? The bull pen or the bull pit? I forget. I think, but the area right where the riders are getting on. And so we got really close and personal. And we were just like in there where it's like they were like warning us not to get too close because the bulls might buck us and mm. things like that. But we weren't sure if we were just going to be like in the audience POV. But like no one cared. So, you know, what? here in L- like I feel like here in L.A. it's like, where's your where's your credentials or blah, blah, blah. Right. And they're like. We're, sometimes we'd be like, oh, we're here with mm-hmm. Jorge and she walked. They're like, yeah. I don't fucking care. Yeah, like, the original one, <laughs> uh, the original event that we were going to shoot him at was um, like a PBR, which is the Professional Bull Riders, like a actual event. And I had to try to get um, access beforehand. And it was just such a thing. And and anyways, they denied me even with the, the Chihuahua thing. And because I think they had um, their own beer sponsors and there was just conflict there. So that fell through so I was like all right well what's that gonna be like how are we gonna shoot this and then um <clears throat> he actually dropped out of that one and then ended up doing petite and then it yeah it just it, worked out is that how you end up in San Antonio is because you have to go mm. to petite yeah, or was I going to, part of it or was we going to San to Antonio go. already I think he lived there yeah he lives uh, there the event the PBR event was going to be maybe like um I think it was called like Brian uh, oh, Texas, Brian but Texas. It's, so I don't know how far that is. Maybe like hour, hour. And I think half it's like three. I think it's by um. Oh, it's by a Texas A and M University. Mm. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, so we were just gonna stay in San Antonio and then drive there and then come back. But it ended up working out that it was like, oh, it's only like forty five minutes away now. Right. Um, and you got to go to Carnival. And we got and, and it was so cool. And I got an airbrushed little smiley shirt. Hey. Oh yeah, and it, it was. Oh, yeah. It just worked out so right. much better because yeah, like I said, like. I had to go through hoops to try to get access. And then here we just literally walk in the back and nobody even questions us. And it was just, it was just cool. And they're all getting in the zone. No one's like, even like, 
weirded out mm-hmm. and like given also we're the only women down there taking pictures yeah you know so everybody's like huh <laughs> yeah i imagine that you probably also don't look like you belong down there yeah right like yeah you're we're not wearing, yeah, we're not wearing yeah. jeans not wearing wranglers uh, yeah exactly <laughs> oh uh i did shoot one rodeo before um in arizona like a indian rodeo oh yeah that's um because yeah. i was like i know i have but i just couldn't remember and um but yeah, I didn't even have access like that. And it wasn't even, um, you know, like a big giant event. Right. It was just like, you kind of have to know people to like get in certain spaces. And um, yeah, so we just got so lucky with, with the strawberry festival. And everybody was all strawberried out too, like mm-hmm. walking around. And I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Like, like, and I was like, this is like <laughs> still like, I mean, this is April of last year and no one's wearing masks, and I'm like, "Fuck, we're gonna get COVID. <laughs> we're totally gonna get COVID <laughs> down here." Because and at some point, though, it's like I think we had masks on in the beginning, but there's so much dust, and yeah. it was like so hard to breathe. It was hot. It was hot, and it's just like, "Fuck, we're in this." Like, I'm we're just, outside. Like, literally, no one's wearing masks, mm-hmm. so it's like, "Fuck it." But we were fine. We were just exhausted. Yeah. But we didn't get sick on that trip. No. Thank goodness. Like we've never yeah. been. We've been fortunate to like be in good health on all of our trips, and everything. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, I was just like, oh my god, it was just it was it was a different world. It's a different world, right? yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, no one gave a fuck about. I mean, <laughs> yeah. the, the COVID didn't exist there, right? No. In a sense, they're no. like, ah, it's fine. It's fine. But it's then fine. It's, it's just Texas. Like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I always am surprised about like how friendly people can be. Like, if you kind of go into things with like a friendly attitude and like open. And I think sometimes I even am guilty of this. Like I get caught up in like the transactional behavior of living in Los Angeles or, you know, you're just going through your routine, like hi, bye. And so what I love about traveling is like puts me in this mindset of like, oh, trying to be like personable and like making sure like I'm not coming off in a certain way. And I feel like it just makes such a big difference because we've never had people really be hostile to us. You know what I mean? Just like everybody's just as curious of us than yeah. as we are of them so that's really cool they're like what are you're you from california why are you here <laughs> even at the airport like the the security when i was asking them to check uh film it's like what do you do like you know and it's like it just felt cool to be like yeah we're here like traveling and taking photos and like that was like our thing and yeah it just mm. yeah mm. i think people are just i don't know if people maybe underestimate us or just like don't think of like wow you guys are doing like cool stuff or like I, yeah it's just it's fun just because it's related even though it's different there's the one time i did feel uncomfortable taking photos in oaxaca and oh, like again speaking yeah. to like the privilege of like travel and and be like just our privileges you know too and like we were at this market in like some village and we were taking pictures and then the security guard comes up to me and he's like can i see your identification and he's like, some people here feel uncomfortable by you taking photos. And I was like, oh, my God. Again, in my broken ass Spanish, lo siento. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just like, I'm like, Valerie, he's asking for a passport. And then as soon as we pull out our American passports, he's like, oh, you're American? It's okay. Take as many photos as you want. And I was like, no. Like, people feel uncomfortable. Like, I'm so sorry. Like, I didn't realize that we're making this is, again, like, mostly indigenous community, you mm-hmm. know. And, and I was just like, oh, shit. Like, it, it really, like... I didn't even say like it ruined my trip or something, but it it made me think differently about the way I was like navigating like yeah. Oaxaca, even yeah, though same. we're brown women, you know what I mean? But it's like, oh yeah, I'm a brown American yeah. woman. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. I'm, you know, not an indigenous person from Oaxaca. You know, again, like they're like, who the fuck are these yeah. girls? Right. <laughs> and, and like, I, tell the security why are these girls. Yeah, what are they doing? Who are they? <laughs> and I guess too, you know, like the uh, Oaxaca having like being almost like infamous for having so many people go there yeah. to you know be tourists yeah ex- they <laughs> all the cultural the yeah. culture right. and i think i just saw it recently in a thing that was like you know um for an ad like someone took a photo of a uh older lady like on the oh. street for her an ad and it was oh god like a french, i didn't see that it was like right. some french it was brand. a french it was a french right clothing line that went out and did this whole thing where you like it's like lights and and drapes and stuff and the people that were directing it weren't really conscious of a lot of the uh 
Uh, you, they just weren't nice. They just yeah. weren't nice. About it. But also, uh, I think the bigger problem was like the idea of COVID. That whole um, production group was not COVID safe. Oh my and god! And considering that everybody was older and indigenous, yeah, that's um, crazy. Not everybody in Mexico is is vaccinated. Yeah. They, they kind of just went in there without even caring about anybody mm-hmm. else, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I totally bad. hear what you're saying about the idea that you want to go in there and not make anybody feel uncomfortable. Um, but n- not everybody's like. Yeah. You, they're yeah. not like us, you know, that's self-conscious of people's feelings and how they feel and trying to make them feel comfortable. They have an agenda. They're trying to do something else yeah, yeah, and yeah. they don't care about any and of And that feelings, was like right? commerce and yeah. like actual brand and, and commercial. <laughs> we don't have those agendas. So I always, like, again, even these learning points, even mm-hmm. if they seem almost like embarrassing, like, oh, duh, Melissa, like, you know, I try to always like, that's what time where sometimes it comes through in the writing where I, like, I wrote about that experience. And even like in El Paso, like some of the like interactions I have with folks with like, again, with my broken Spanish and just like. This I'm just sharing that because it's mm-hmm. just, it's my truth, you know what yeah. I mean? And it's like, you know, we learn things as we travel. Yeah. And I think that, you know, like if we don't have the opportunity to like grow and share that with others, like yeah. we can't, we're not always like acting in the most like super conscious ways. It's even if we have like the best intentions, because like intentions, good intentions don't mean shit all the mm-hmm. time. You know what yeah. I mean? You can go into things with good intentions, but then you get a situation may like check it and then you have to like address it and acknowledge it. And so I think we always try to do that. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, exactly. Like every trip, um, for me is always like a learning trip in many ways. So it's like, yeah, culturally and just all that stuff. And when you're traveling and, and being conscious of, of who you are, you know, and where you are and everything and, um, what are you doing? You know? So it's like, um, yeah, there's just, so many things that like you just learn and um learn and grow and that's always like the best part of all of these trips is like just yeah just evolving and just right. learning and it, from others and other other places so or just the scenarios that you're in right the yeah. idea of having manners being nice mm-hmm. you know being super cool but you're right sometimes you do go into certain situations and you're trying to be polite and sometimes that isn't enough sometimes you need to go and put in the work to kind of identify yourself and Mm -hmm. tell people, Hey, these are my intentions. This is what I'm doing. Is this cool? Yeah. And if not, I mean, you know, time for you to just kind of Mm -hmm. either just watch and not take pictures or anything. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. Um, er, Don't ever try to force any photos. If we're not feeling it with the people or they're not feeling, you know, like we would never want to do that. But, um, yeah, and we also try to make all of these zines like very obvious that they are travel zines. So it's like we're not trying to say this is all the Southwest and this is what it, it is and this is the definitive thing mm-hmm. or like our New Mexico, even though we called it like New Mexico, it does not by any means encompass all of the culture that is New Mexico. So yeah, like we're trying to make sure it's like. I don't know, and I feel like that, or Oaxaca, we hope it comes through. It's like we're not going in with like kind of like these touristy intentions, and like uh, doing our best to like make sure that those aren't our intentions in the way we document stuff and the way we like interact with people. Um, so it's like, yeah, it's like you can travel in a way that isn't like being a quote unquote tourist. Yeah, you know. Right. Flipping American through your- tourists have a bad reputation. <laughs> we're trying to change that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> slowly. <laughs> we're kind of shitty. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Flipping through your zine, you'd see a, a lot of photos that kind of convey these intimate, like family moments, or you know, very special situations that you capture. And I think that that speaks to how you guys approach people. Mm-hmm. You know, they're they're okay with sharing those intimate moments with you, and you you know, the writing really adds to that because it tells us you know, in more detail, the story, the, some of the people's, you know, backgrounds. And I think that's really great. It really does come across. Yeah. The and scene. then uh, just as being women, we're like, we see things in, in like our way and we're, we're photographing it that way, or she's writing about it in, you know, Melissa's perspective. And like, yeah, it's very specific. And like, even the cover, like I wanted that, the little bear on it, like, you know, like it's just these little kind of like Easter eggs, I guess. It's like, you know, um, these kind of like little soft touches to what the road trip is. It's beautiful. I think y'all conveyed it pretty well, honestly. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. But, um, thank you for sharing it. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Congratulations on everything, ladies. 
We'll be zine. planning our next one. Fourth Already? Hey. No, uh -oh. I don't know. All right. <laughs> if we All have right. time. <laughs> Someone sponsor us to go to yeah. Montana or the Dakotas. Somebody. Or, yeah, we're trying to. Somebody. Yeah. Pay somebody out there. We never know. We might we have some beers. Fish. Yeah, let's manifest that actually. Yeah. Any beers? Any alcohol? Any food? Any. You know what? Actually, the alcohol waters? was. The, the beer uh, assignment was different for me because, I mean, I've done other shoots before, like just random different things, even for other companies, but I'd never shot for a, um, a beer company and, and their guidelines were very specific with the advertising. So I had to always keep that in mind or like, um, one of the girls that we shot in a band was actually pregnant. pregnant. So I was like, oh my God, like, okay, well, we can't have her drinking. You can't just, have her in the picture. Yeah, wow. it was just like all these things or like um, we went to a boxing gym and it's kind of like you can use the beer to as like a celebration after. But, but not it, like it, inside the gym. Not like it is helping you in like a sports thing. You know, I think for a long time, sports and beer, it was always like, um, connected. Yeah, yeah. They they had to definitely not performance enhancing. Yeah, exactly. I don't know, separate. man. I, I have no fear. <laughs> but, yeah. I'll box anybody when I'm drunk. <laughs> Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. Yeah. San Antonio. What do you mean? Beer. Let's yeah. fucking go. Who wants to fight? Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely no more. Uh, yeah, no more beer. No more beer. Well, I get. I think like for us, it's like the sweet spot again would be not have to do any branded content. Yeah. Like just to like have a straight like. Uh, invisible sponsor exactly. just like do oh, we'll, your thing we'll put we'll put your logo on the oh back. we'll put your logo on the back <laughs> right. we'll give you a shout out yeah. but yeah right. and i mean it, it's like one of those things that we'll keep doing it some way somehow mm -hmm. just like we have like again surviving off avocados like whatever we have to do like we'll in our do imagination it. In our imagination <laughs> like I, I think um i don't see us stopping but i think we're always gonna like with every zine and everything we do we're trying to like push it a little bit more like oh like having this thing here at altura and like that's our first time doing something in person and so i'm really excited to meet folks in person because there are people that i know have been following oh, me yeah. in valerie's road trip zines and that are I'm excited to meet, you know, and just like hopefully they can come out in person and in real life. So hopefully we can do more in person events like for our next one and like kind of like go to new places as mm -hmm. well. So for the people that can't make it right, that are looking to get their hands on the scene, where can they get this um, a website? Big Cartel. What do we get? That's uh, so uh, the day they'll, the zines will be available at the show. Um, and then the next day we're going to put up the remaining uh, oh online somewhere yeah okay on, on my big cartel yeah and we'll have like a link and all that very cool yeah. awesome ladies thank you so much we appreciate your time thank this you has been thank awesome. you come excited back. for the show yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you yeah come by for some tea anytime you want oh yeah tea. there won't be any free tea sorry <laughs> <laughs> we gotta stock it we'll stop BYOT BYOT <laughs> tea and avocados BYOT in it I kind of want to try one of those pressed muffins too <laughs> yeah and yeah. Valerie's gonna do a press <laughs> muffin <laughs> pop up. <laughs> First it's my ever new thing. <laughs> I'm doing it. <laughs> Thank you, Melissa and Valerie, so much for collaborating with Altura LA on your zine release. Come back for tea and the movie speed anytime. Special thanks to Pamasur for this track called Lo Fi El Panadero con el Pan. You can listen to this song and more on Spotify and Apple Music. And of course, the biggest thank you is to you the listeners and visitors for being part of the Altura community. Without your time and support, we wouldn't be here. Please make sure to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Feel free to connect with us on our website, altura.la, join our mailing list, and of course, on all social sites. Thank you for listening to the Altura podcast. Looking forward to hosting you at Altura LA. 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 LA.